What is up my designer slash coder friends? This is a project here that you're going to learn how to create today. And it's actually a project, a lesson from my advanced front ends course, which by the way, is going to be ending the early access period within 24 hours. So if you want the project files for this and you want to take this course and really learn how to create a lot of different, really cool interactive examples like this and more, definitely check out the top link in the YouTube description to get access to the early access period to advanced front ends. Now we're going to be utilizing what's called the GreenSock animation platform, which is a JavaScript animation library for handling these animations. So you have to know some JavaScript in order to follow along. And again, if you don't take that course, but yeah, you're going to be able to unlock a lot of possibilities with this sort of thing when it comes to creating not just the horizontal scroller, but also the scroll activated animations and understanding how to time them when a user scrolls down. All right, I'll stop talking now. Let's get started. Alrighty, hopefully you came up with something that worked out. If not, don't worry about it. If you're brand new to this, I really wouldn't expect you to get it, you know, your first time anyways. Um, it's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and switch gears. I'm gonna open up here. This is the before project uh, folder for this particular project. As you can see, this time there's no HTML right here outside of the script tags, of course. So I decided we're gonna write this HTML from scratch just so I can really describe what's happening in the HTML structure because you have to have, now that these are getting a little bit more advanced, these projects, you have to understand what's happening with the HTML and the CSS uh, in order to get the full picture. So uh, for me, what we're gonna first start with is obviously we can't do anything without the HTML. So uh, if we look at our Figma document, you know, we have, we're going to have to have an overall container that contains these three different slides. But even outside of that, we're going to have another parent container. So if you think of it like this, I get a big rectangle here. Let's get rid of that. We're going to give ourselves a stroke and we'll make it red and we'll make it thicker. There we go. So we'll say like this right here is a parent container of um, each of these sections. So again, that could be like this. We get this over here, here's section one, section two, and of course section three. And then we're gonna have an, a, 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 our very first element is actually gonna be one that extends outside as well right here. And the purpose of this one is to get rid of a horizontal scroll bar. We'll call it outer, okay? So let's go back and I'm just gonna say period outer for Emmet abbreviation, just hit enter. There we go, saves ourselves some typing. And then we're gonna have that other container inside of that, and that's gonna be called slider. All right, and then we have our three sections. So that's gonna be section. And before I replicate this to the other sections, I'm gonna get the markup in this section, and then we can just copy and paste that. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to have inside of this particular section is an inner element. Um, and kind of think of it about the relationship between these two elements. There's gonna be an inner element here. And then I'll make that a display flex so that we can then take another element. Let me just go back to my um, Figma. Another element that will wrap around these two elements and that will allow us to uh, position this to the bottom essentially. So let me show you what I mean. So for inner, the first thing we'll put is the actual image and that's gonna be the fish. So fish1.png and I'm just gonna copy and paste off screen that alt, there we go, a lumafin fish. And then also a parent container around those two pieces of type. So this inner element will be flex and we're gonna align the items to the bottom. Uh, or the end rather. And this image right here won't be affected that, by that because that will be a position absolute element. Um, so what we're gonna have here is an H1, Lumafin, and then a paragraph right here. And I already have the text that ChatGPT generated for me for these fictional crea creatures, and that is right here. And that's all our HTML structure looks like uh, for each one of these sections. So we'll take this section, we're gonna go ahead and paste that. We only have to change this to fish two. Um, 
I will go ahead and modify that text in a second to make it custom. And then here's fish three, and there we go. So I'm gonna take my paragraph right here. Let's go to the middle one, fish two. I'm just uh, making this content custom. You don't have to do this uh, if you don't want to. It's not a big deal. There we go. Okay. So I'll just leave these alt tags the same. It's not a big deal. This is not a real serious project. Um, and then finally, we do have to worry about, if I come back to our Figma document, these fish. All right. So that's called fish four over here. That's what that looks like. And I'm just going to go outside of everything. And this is going to be a position um, fixed element because these fish are just going to stay in the viewport and we're just going to move them. So we'll just have a fish container. And inside of there, we're going to have an image source, fish4.png. Uh, we're going to put a custom data attribute. But for now, for the alt, I'm going to put animate ve animated vector fish. There we go. And then um, we're going to put a data hyphen distance custom attribute property. And we'll put this one like at 80. Um, and what this is going to allow us to do is to communicate this um, custom data attribute value, which will allow us to kind of create a parallax effect um, with the, the fish. And this is going to be tied to an X percent value, I believe. So that's why I have 80 here. Some might be up to 200. Some might be like 15, something like that. So I, I'm going to copy and paste the rest of these from my, my reference code. And this is what this looks like. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and you can see they're all the same fish, all the same data distance right here. Okay, or not not the same data distance, but the same data distance uh, attribute with different values. So I'm going to say that, and that is all that we have for the HTML. Now, if I come over here to the CSS, the CSS is already completed for this project because I don't want to sit there creating the CSS from scratch. We will do that in the final project. Um, but for now, this is all done. So as you can see, our outer div, which is our first one, overflow X hidden, that was its purpose. Um, our, dis our slider is a display flex of a 300 viewport width. Each section has a height of 100 viewport height and a width of 100%. Then our inner element, uh, if you recall, that's the direct child of the section element. So everything's wrapped inside of this inner element. Um, as you can see, we have a display flex align item ends, which then pushes down the content to the very bottom right here. Um, and then we just have some other things here. Um, here's the fish, the big large fish, where there's three of them, there's creatures. Uh, position absolute, I just changed each one to a width of 80%. And then th these three lines right here will center that in the viewport. Additionally, we have our fish container, um, which is position fixed, a negative Z index because it's in the background, um, and then our images right here. And then I'm just using CSS instead of JavaScript to um, communicate the different uh, scales and the different positions of the fish themselves. Okay, so hopefully that, that I know that was a lot to take in, uh, but that is what we have so far. So if I open with live server, um, this is what we have and we can't scroll down or anything right now because we took that overflow X hidden off or, or the, we took off the overflow on the X axis on that out, outer element. But there are th two other sections off to the right over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the JavaScript. So as we can see, we have Lennis, scroll trigger and GSAP imported. And the first thing we need access to is a few different uh, properties or constant the DOM elements. So I'm just gonna paste those in and those are right here. So the first one we have is our slider. So that's just a query selector. It's, it selects our slider. Then our sections, sec selecting each of the three sections inside of the slider. And then also the fishies as I call them. And that's selecting all the images specifically with GSAP utils to array. All right, so the first thing that we'll focus on is defining a timeline, uh, because if you think about it, it is timeline animation. The fish comes in, the text comes in from nowhere as well. So what we can do is say, let timeline equals gsap.timeline. Defaults are going to be ease, oopsie, ease right there, none. 
put a comma here. And then inside here, we're gonna have our scroll trigger. So we set this up, something like this up very similar to before. We're gonna say trigger is gonna be the slider itself. We're gonna pin true. Scrub will be two, which means like a two second delay after the uh, scroll bar has been moved down or through the mouse scroll wheel, it will keep animating. Um, and then we're gonna put our end function plus equals. And I already had the code for me right there, slider dot offset width. Okay, all right, so that's good right here. This will, this code right here in and of itself won't do anything uh, beyond what we've already seen because we're not you, actually creating any animations yet. So let's get the scrolling portion done here. And all we have to do is put TL2 and we're gonna take our slider and we're gonna say X percent. And just to show you before we, we put this in programmatically, I just to show you what the, 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 those programmatic values equal in the context of this type of slider where you have three slides, it's actually negative 66, right? I, and if I put, well, let's just hit save and come over here, there you go. So if you pay attention exactly to where the scroll bar is, it ends right there and that's essentially what we want. So we can see all of these sea creatures now. Okay, um, additionally, outside of that, we're gonna go ahead and iterate over each of our sections. So sections for each, we're gonna do a stop and an index, uh, and that will be right here. Okay, so what I wanna do now is we wanna take a look at our content, and we have a content element that's wrapped around our H1 in our paragraph. As you can see right here, here's the div class content, h1 paragraph. And again, this is the thing that's aligned to the bottom, this type right down here. Okay, and we want that to kind of come from an opacity of zero and a, uh, a y position that's taller. So what we'll do is we're gonna say timeline to, up, uh, yep, to, and, oh, actually from, sorry, come from, as I said, and we're gonna say um, stop dot query selector. So we're scoping into that particular section's content element right here. And then inside of here, we're going to say X per, or Y percent negative 50. We're also going to take the opacity to zero. Now here's where we define the scroll trigger. So the trigger is going to be itself. So in other words, we're gonna take our stop right here, all that code, and put that right there as well. And then we're also gonna have a start, left, center, and then an end of center right there, center, center, and then container animation is timeline, and then scrub will be true. Okay, so if we save this, We could see now our type is coming in. Very, very cool. And so, um, if you again, if you want to see how this is working, markers true. This kind of identifies what these values are doing with that scroll trigger. So you see, right when our ends meet, this starts to push up, and when when scroll or start intersects with start down here these two elements, that's when it begins. Very nice, okay. And then outside of that, we're gonna chain another tween and it's gonna be from. So we're gonna say from, and it's actually giving me the right selector right here, but the values are incorrect. So let's gut all of that from the center. And this will be a X percent of 40 and a Y percent of negative 100. That's kind of the values that I played around with that I liked. So ease, we're gonna say elastic out one one. Now if this was a smaller value like 0.3, it would be a really springy animation and it looks kind of strange. This is much more smooth and less noticeable as an actual effect. Um, so now we could type in our scroll trigger and again, it's going to be 
the trigger is going to be itself. So trigger right there. We're also going to have a scrub uh, of two and then a container animation of timeline. Actually, if we look up here, scrub two is already set on the timeline scroll trigger itself. I think we probably don't need that here. So let me delete that. Let's save that. Now let's refresh. Okay, so let's add that back and see if that's doing the trick. Yes, it is. Yeah, we do actually need that. Okay, so refreshing, coming down. Okay, eh, so it's not really the exact expected behavior. But what we'll do is we'll come back to this. Yeah, that looks actually, it's a little bit more exaggerated than what. Oh, okay, so I think I know one of the reasons is I wanted to put make this start at the same time. Potentially that could be one of the issues. Um, um, let me see, shift F5, let's go back. Okay, so before I diagnose, because that's not exactly what I want, we're gonna move on to the fish background. So again, remember we created a, a property called uh, fishies that grabs each of the images. And so we're gonna say for each, and we're gonna say fish and the index here, our arrow function. And inside of here, it's a very simple tween. We don't even have to tie this to the same timeline. We just do gsap to, or from rather. We'll take our fish, and then we'll give it an X percent of fish.dataset dot distance. That's how we get that custom data attribute. And then scroll trigger, I'm just gonna say scrub and 0 0.3. So we're gonna save it. Let's refresh. Now the, the fish in the background should move at different speeds, and there they go. I actually kind of like how this comes in It kind of just comes in at a little bit more delayed than what I would probably want, but I th still think it's really kind of cool and a little bit more whimsical than in the original. Uh, here was my original. No, that actually was not my original. I'll show you my original real quickly if I click uh, go live on that one. You'll see another one pop up. This is the original one that I kind of showed. They kind of come in at the same time. I'm not really sure what the discrepancy is there uh, in my code, but I'm sure it's something that's very small. I uh, but yeah, let me let me try putting this at a that offset. We'll see if that does anything to the original, which is right here. I think they're coming in more at the same time now. Maybe. Oh, but either way, I think you get the uh, the point here, and um, hopefully now you kind of have a pretty solid understanding of how to tackle these horizontal sliders. Now that we're at the end of that particular ch uh, chapter, we're going to be integrating one for sure in our final project. Um, so keep out for that. And hopefully now you're pretty solid when it comes to these horizontal sliders. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to take advantage of the early access period for the advanced front ends course. Again, you could join now with the link in the bottom here in the YouTube description, assuming, of course, you've watched this on the day it was uploaded. If not, this course will be fully finished within maybe a month and a half to two or three max. Anyhow, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.